Welcome. I'm Stephen Winnick of the American Folklife Center of the Library of Congress. For many years, we've presented the Homegrown Concert Series featuring the best in folk music and dance from around the world. Then in the year 2020, because of the global pandemic, we shifted to producing an online video concert series, which we call Homegrown at Home. So now in 2022, this is our third year of Homegrown at Home concerts. And we are very happy to be presenting the Arma Rhymers, a wonderful group with a long history of presenting the music, drama, and rhyming traditions of their part of Northern Ireland. When we can, we like to conduct interviews with members of the groups we present. So I am here with Dara Vallely and Anne Hart, respectively the founder and director of the Armagh Rhymers. <laughs> So welcome, Dara and Anne, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Stephen. Yes. Thank you for asking us. It's, it's a yeah. great honor. Thank you. I see you, you like books. Have you them all read? Yes. <laughs> this is actually my own. This I'm in my house because this oh. is homegrown at home. So this is my own folklore library behind me, not, not the stacks of the Library of Congress, which do look somewhat similar to this. Um, so um, let's begin talking about the group from the perspective of the name of the group, right? So it's the Armagh Rhymers. There's two words. The first is Armagh. So tell us a little bit about your region of Northern Ireland. Well, Armagh, I suppose Armagh, it's a very old name and it takes its name from the, the horse here that you can see there. Do you want to say something about that? Yeah, well, the, the Armagh itself was called after Maka and Maka um, was a queen, a horse goddess, a shapeshifter. Um, the name of our town in Irish is Ardwaka, the Heights of Maka. So, um, you know, we've got very ancient roots here. And of course, we had to have a mask representing Maka. Yeah. Um, and it also reminds me of uh, Paul Muldoon, who is professor at Princeton and comes from just a couple of miles out the road. And he's written a great poem about Maka. Maka, the Ice Age held you down, heavy as a man as he dragged himself away. It's a great, it's a great poem, and he went to school about, oh, just about a half a mile away from yeah, here wow. where we're speaking today at the Irish Centre in Armagh. So we're intensely proud of Armagh. So, so Maka is the is the, the horse goddess and Ard Waka, and then you have Owen Waka as well, which is, is the old fort which is just outside the road. But mentioned in, in Ptolemy's map of the second century, so Armagh is fairly old. Mm. The county itself is kind of an artificial. Um, thing which was set up by the British uh, in, in the 16th century I think they divided Ireland into 32 counties mm -hmm. uh, at the moment six are um, because of partition there, there's a border and so there's, you have 26 and six I think most people know that and uh, uh, so we're called the Armagh Rhymers because we're from Armagh but um, all, also because um, uh, people have written about the tradition of rhyming in Armagh. In other parts, it's called uh, Mummin. And mm -hmm. other places, they're happy to call them straw men. And other places, bitty men. And other places, rain boys and uh, scatters and galoshans. And as my cousin Sammy McNeese, Sammy always said there was more intelligent beings uh, eating grass. <laughs> so um, it seemed to be it seems to attract a certain personality but Raymond itself um, is probably a house visiting tradition and the stage is the the kitchen floor so when we're performing no matter where we're performing we're, we would remind the audience that what you're saying is um, a, something that was performed on a kitchen floor um, and still is like it's still yeah a, and often tradition. we often perform when say we're we're in school we often perform in the round and uh, not so much on the stage um a bit like the kitchen floor yeah mm -hmm. so that, that's that's arma and that's yeah rhymers. that's arma uh -huh. and rhymers well thank you yeah. and and 
Um, I should reveal that uh, we here at the Library of Congress actually have our own Mummers play, which we perform mm -hmm. through, throughout the library during the Christmas season. So we're, we uh, have taken on this tradition ourselves as well. Um, right. and, and we noted in the concert that your concert video actually contains a brief Mummers play, which is quite modern in a sense. Um, but also uses the language and structure of that tradition. So how do you navigate that path between following tradition but keeping current within the mumming or rhyming tradition? Well, it was somewhere along the line somebody said, and it's quite true, the, the, the traditions have to change if they're going to survive. They have to adopt and have to evolve. And um, especially performing to different types of audience, um, uh, we would, if there's a lot of children in the audience, obviously our approach is going to be different. If there's a, some academics, if there's a group of Americans over, you know, it's going to be different or mm -hmm. uh, Spanish people, the, the performance itself, the content is going to change or the content might say the same, but the form would be different or the form would be different and the, the content would be different. Would that be true, Anne, do you think? Yeah, um, I think I think our, our, our performances are really governed by really who's in front of us which can be a bit daunting at times yeah. but um mm -hmm. you know dar's been at it a long time and he's a total master at, at reading the audience and you know knowing what what they like and you get great ideas like watching your mummers play oh, it was the, very funny the, the hacker i love the hacker yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so we, we we would have um a lot of very traditional characters but um and again we, we have also experimented with the, the storyteller. The storyteller is a very impor important part of our tradition. You know, we have several plays. Now, Cúhollán, uh, De Kavna is one, and uh, The Poet's Wake is another one, where you have a story interrupted by these characters. So, um, and usually it happens in, in a conversation anyway that somebody will butt in with, with so a little bit of news that has nothing well, to what was said before. All the time here. And... So we, the, the, uh, we, we've um, again that, that's part part of our tradition too. The, the storyteller who is co constantly interrupted, and um, the the other thing is that uh, and at the end of uh, you know at the end of each uh, speech, the character will say, and "If you don't believe a word of that, <laughs> uh, I, not to introduce the next character, but to say, I play we tune." Or I'll say a poem, and you can stick it in your hat. Um, so it's it, it 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 gives great freedom to the, the person who has it. Does and, and it's 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 it really is. It's very it's very democratic because you know everybody's got some sort of a wee turn that they can do, um, a wee poem or a rhyme or a song or this. You know everybody has something. Um, and I remember, you know, many years ago when I was teaching in school, I used to do the mummers play, and every child in the class could do something. Whereas, you know, your traditional play, you've got your couple of stars and that's it. The mummers play is so, so inclusive. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, and again, we're, we're, we're not tied to um, uh, those artificial voices. You know, we call them Sunday voices, you know, or the preacher's sure. voice. You right. know, voices. The BBC voice, you know, <laughs> the artificial voice. You can rattle it out at 90 miles an hour mm. or you can take it steady and you can be dramatic if you want. It's it and um, it's your voice and it's your part. And uh, so we give as little instruction as possible to people that come to work with us. We mm -hmm. simply simply say, tear away mm. and make an idiot out of yourself. And <laughs> because I don't think every word has to be really understood. You know, like the, the, most of uh, the pip, the poo, the palsy, and the gout, the ringworm, and the skitters, and the long spit out. Yeah. They, 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 it, 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 you literally vomit out the lines. Yeah. You let them go, <laughs> you know. And um, whereas a, a, lot of, a lot of the English groups now we watch doing the mummers play, and it's um, sad, you know. But um, <laughs> well, I, I think too well, that creating yeah, that cool. it's chaos and, chaos. and that, that adds to the chaos when everything's very frantic and, yeah. Uh, yeah. and all, almost a breathlessness when you're when you're delivering the line um because it's of no consequence whatsoever I yeah because they're not well, right that's the thing is a part of the point of the doctor's speech that you were just making is that nobody understands it right it's 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 gibberish really <laughs> in its way right and so that's sort of part of the of of that part of the play is uh is the 
the incomprehensibility of what's going on. Yeah. So, yeah. And that sort of adds to the atmosphere, as you say. So I so thank you for commenting on our Mummers play with the hacker. And of course, that. That, yeah. that 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 is looking forward to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> so that, Father, that... Father Christmas was great. I, I, I had not heard you. those lines. Although my it was my birthday the other day and I was telling everybody that, that, that my, my hair had gone white, my, my beard is long, my beard is gray, <laughs> yeah. my, back is bent, my knees are weak. <laughs> what was the rest of it? Um, I hadn't heard that one for a long time. Yeah, um, that was that. That's a nice one. So thank you. And and you know, so that was of course put together out of the consequences of the pandemic. That you know, Zoom meetings have become uh, the you know the way that in which people can interact. But yours was more direct in in dealing with the pandemic itself. So could you say a little bit about it, using the coronavirus that way in your play? Oh. <clears throat> But when it, when it started, I reached for my Albert Camus. I did A level French at school, and, and I got. The, I must have lent it to somebody. But it, so I went on Amazon and I got the, got the copy, and it must have been the last copy because everybody was doing the same thing. Right. And we we I don't know if you read you 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 did the the Camus. I did the Camus bit at the end. No, I don't think I did that for the concert. Actually, no. It's it's on the it's, CD. It's on the CD. It's on the. Yeah. But but it's it's not on the film. I don't think you did in the film. Well, no. maybe you did. Did I? No. No, you didn't. No. No. Perhaps not. So so the camera is 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 speaks on the. On the recording. On the recording on on the CD and uh, that, that, that's that's it in vinyl here at the back. So you could, you could, we got it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Excellent. Just in case you had missed it. Yeah. You? Thank you. <laughs> those are available <laughs> for a small a small fee. We a, a, a lot of fortune. A lot of people from Louisiana writing in for it and from Newfoundland. Um, yes. You know, for, for for both. So the vinyl the vinyl's coming the vinyl's coming back. Yeah. Um, strong strong mumming tradition in Newfoundland. So I can see why they would oh, yeah. want to oh, yeah. see what you were up to. Yeah. Yeah. Well the 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 saints the saints here, you know, um the 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 lose pos, po, popularity and then they come back, you know, and uh, and probably they're looked at in, in a different way. And the rituals associated with the, the different saints here um like Mahua is a, a saint here and Mahua in the 8th century uh, is, is one of our mummers character and he was writing to uh, Colum Kill uh, Colum Kill in the 6th or 7th century mm -hmm. and Adamon wrote the whole history of, of that and um, uh, again there's a well here and there's a ritual associated with it and uh, and not far from those wells are, are schools you know and uh, be, like to bring the kids there and to perform those rituals uh, with the masks and um, with, with with some of some of our effigies here, you know, oh, like yeah. the, the Babo Nabaltana. Now this this was being carried round round the wells here, and we 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 we, we took that stage further. Um, the hands are bound, so we were sent in this using the, the Gaelic language uh, or in Scotland the Gaelic. Uh, these were sent to the Gaelic schools in Scotland in a cardboard box. Right, and we we told them the story of Mahua and writing mm -hmm. the column kill, and we had a we digital film made about it, and we had the lines, and um, so th th this arrived in a cardboard box, call and it was called nobody, you know, and um, and it wasn't flesh and bone like you and I, and we explained that it had no voice, right, mm -hmm. and could could you make it feel? Yeah, welcome? and uh, interestingly, um. I think that the project sort of was at roughly the same time as, as that little child was lifted out of the Mediterranean Sea. It was just a tr tragic, mm. and the children would have all seen that on the TV. Yeah. And all, all of the schools treated the the doll, the babo, as if it were a, a a child, a refugee child. It was very moving, actually, it's the things that they did and mm -hmm. the the homes that they came up with and the stories that they told. It it was mm -hmm. it was a, a great project and empathy more more so than what we, we thought it was going to be. You know. And they noticed that it was naked, mm -hmm. so that it was it. We we saw that they made the film using their phones, and uh, mm -hmm. so they they had the kilt and all the Scotty stuff on it and tartans and. Um, it had a name, and then it was brought round, and it was one of the one of the most impressive yeah. ones, the Isle of Skye, Port Ray, um, Gaelic School, and again, 
So we had the Gaelic schools in, in Port Rhee communicating with the Irish language schools here, the Nianri and the mm-hmm. Munspilna here, and uh, seven, all taking a different spin on the, and all talking, the, to have that empathy for uh, somebody that has... But, but they did that themselves. You know, we didn't instruct them. Mm-hmm. It was very... Um, it came naturally from, from mm-hmm. it was lovely. And, yeah. and ju- just to back up a bit, this is a project that you did with um, Gaelic language schools, both in Ireland and in Scotland, yes. um, yeah. around this tradition of the of the Babog. So mm-hmm. explain it a little bit where, you know, where the Babog itself comes from. Well, Babog, Babog, um, it's really called Babog, no, at different times for the different seasons, this could be Babog Nabaltana, you know, but at, 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 at um, for Bridget for Bridget's day, which is start of spring, it'd be made of rushes, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we have the Brat Bridge there. We have um, the Bridget's uh, mask, which is up made out of rushes. She's associated with the. She is the, the Banri in the the Lucras. She is the the queen of the rushes, mm-hmm. right? So the the rituals that are associated with that. But to, to, to give it a new uh, a new life. A new beginning, a new purpose, uh, really. A new purpose, mm-hmm. you know that um, um, that the that these these things like um, Column Kill. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the story of Column. It's his fifteen hundredth uh, anniversary, you know. So mm-hmm. um, we 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 uh, commissioned uh, the bells. Have you one of those bells? Um, no. We, we, with some cast bells and some of the blacksmiths here, oh. we have several blacksmiths here, Joe McGill and um, eh, John Callan and, and his sons. And um, and you can you, you see, the, it, I don't know if you can see the, he is, he is, he is associated with the Koresh, which, which is the heron here, mm-hmm. you know, and there's a story of the heron and um do you want to tell this? There was different uh, stories, but coming from the eighth century, you know, and Colin Kill is the person who, uh, uh, the first person, uh, he's recognised as uh, a piece of legislation that became was church law and became state law uh, in the Celtic countries that women and, and children were non-combatants and had to be not treated as, as plunder. Yeah, or, it comes. Uh, uh, Adamans, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Colin Kill's law. Um, mm-hmm. So um, we we um, we we're, we're fortunate to have so many creative people around us. Like Paul, yeah. Paul makes these here. But also <laughs> Joe to and John does this, <laughs> and and Tim Tim's from Belfast, by the way. But yeah, Tim tell us Shaw, about tell Tim, us about your statues. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tim Shaw is he's he's a he's a very eminent. Um, he, he Belfast man, bronze sculptor. Right? He was from he, originally from Belfast, but he now lives in Devon, mm-hmm. and he has been um, coming out with us for years. And the first time he ever saw us was uh, Stephen's Day, day after Christmas, I, I, and the snow was on the ground. I'm going to show you this yeah, here. The snow was on the yeah, ground. You see, it's on the on the white marble. Ha- we ha- he has marble us here. On, on white marble, and I I think he's he's very interested in the mask. Um, and he's mm. just done a great job in the bronze here. Yeah. Half animal, you know. Yeah, and half yeah. beast, you know, the mm. animal. But where how, tra- how 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 people transform when when the, when they wear the mask. And he with with the, they hadn't in in Devon they have the horse tradition and uh, in Wales the Mary Lou tradition. But a lot mm. of the rituals were lost associated with that the the, the fire ritual the fire jumping rituals. Um, and also the the, the 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 sacred sites that were associated with the, with the saints and and wells, with water that were associated with the blacksmiths, with the craftspeople, and he has a, a beautiful film there that he, he made recently um, near Saint Ives, uh, Padstow, lifting Padstow, the curse, Padstow, yeah. lifting the curse. Now the curse was put on the Tate Gallery. The, in london the royal academy probably the, rightly the, rightly so the royal academy the royal one the royal it was the the, the the curse was put on the royal academy by gilbert and can i say it by gilbert and george who are two artists two english artists well that's a matter of opinion yes <laughs> and right. this was this was tim <laughs> two, he, he, two chancers yeah, can he, i say that he did a, a ritual with the masks uh, lifting it was very good and he, he had heard that we, we would be brought over to Herefordshire 
to a, you know, full of black and white pubs. And the last pub in England that wasn't owned by the big conglomerates, by the big, brewery, the big brewers, breweries, yeah. owned by uh, McEnane's, the two, mm. the two sisters. And uh, it was going to be bought over, and they wanted to keep it in private ownership and brew their own beer. Hmm. And when we got over there, he says, well, I want you to dance the course now. And I said, what is the course? And <laughs> well, somewhere along the line, I, probably with too many pints of cider. Old and my, Rosie. Old Rosie. <laughs> and on my last visit, I said, well, sure, I'll put, a, I'll put a curse on them if they come near the pub. So <laughs> I got to the stage of going near near the court. <laughs> they backed down. Uh-oh. Probably not because they were afraid of the curse, but they were afraid of the publicity and afraid of the humour. And um, so there's... Um, we are available if anybody has <laughs> needs anybody curse. <laughs> You're available for curses if <laughs> if anybody's at the Library of Congress. And just just a, just and, another and service that you offer, stuff. right? Yeah. So, so you've mentioned the masks several times, and I think our audience would really be fascinated with uh, you know just a little background on not just your masks, but the but the whole tradition of of wicker and straw and rush. Uh, construction of masks and things in in the in the rhyming tradition. I think you should well start with James. You have you yeah, but you have to you have to distinguish mm. first of all with these type of masks that you, you can see them in, on the shelf up above us, between ones that are made for ritual and ones that are purely functional. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of the straw gear that uh, was used here, particularly in, in, in North Armagh, here the, it was used going out on, on a on a mucky wet day where you'd be soaked and your clothes would be soaked and you would have capes a cape around your shoulders and and, a, and leggings and and in, in the winter time your, your feet wrapped in straw so yeah. uh, so a lot of people haven't experienced that no. yeah uh, a lot of kids find it very hard to know that a young man like myself actually went to school part of the year barefoot you'd mm -hmm. be ashamed to be wearing shoes you know mm -hmm. you'd be a, a sissy you know <laughs> that, that um so the, 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 those are those are nearly those are ritual masks um uh that that, that mostly as we have here um th this particular this one here is is a ma is a jacket that's made for it's a ritual type ja jacket it was made by Johnny Martin from Do Rock Edney uh, Blacktown County Fermanagh Fermanagh mm -hmm. and um, again it, it it wasn't appearing in the folk museums um because Johnny did not like visitors, and hmm. um, he was a Presbyterian, and um, a lot of his visitors were coming from the National Museum of Ireland. And uh, I remember one day sitting with Johnny, and um, Johnny had a letter with a big green stamp on it with a harp, and it was offering him five hundred pounds to make the, the saddle and the breeching and the reins and the all the harness for a horse, right? And, and it was for the National Stud of Ireland. Mm. And he says, Johnny, I get you the straw. And, you know, and that's no problem. Let's do this. And, and he says, I'm not dealing with those bastards. And he rolled it up and threw it into the back of the fire. I said, well, why did you do that? He says, they're not from my part of the country. You know, so we got in, believe it or not. Why did we get in then? We, we, had, we had a lovely cake with us. We had we were armed. Nobody got in through that house, but we had brought him cake, but we had brought him something. He was a lovely man. He, and he was he lived on his own with Peggy. Chickens, chickens. And, and Peggy. And uh he I, him chickens. You have no <laughs> I, you know, people have written books about this tradition and uh, they don't realise who they're dealing with, the amount of intelligence that man had, mm. and much of fun and much creativity mm. that he had. And it's only when I asked him about, you know, had any brothers and sisters. He says, indeed, I had two brothers. Now, this is a man who had no run on water and no electricity. And, and it's about the year 1980 or mm -hmm. in the 70s. Yeah, no, up in the, in 80, the 80s, in the yeah, 80s, maybe 85. Yeah. 85. Mm -hmm. No, and, and in order to get to the, I had given up going to the house because I said, nobody can live up this lane, this road. <laughs> the grass was going up the middle and um, we brothers. arrived there. But we had a cake and we had two pan shop bread because it was so remote he wasn't he liked shop bread but his sister Peggy didn't make it but you had the chickens from Una and that's another day mm. you know because he and he gave me or give us he said uh, take it and burn it 
So what mm. and so we we, we 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 it was payment and kind with Johnny. So we did give him the television boxes full of chickens one day, <laughs> and, and we were able to say. And he says, "What? How much do I owe you?" And I said, uh, "You owe me nothing, you know." Um, uh, you, but he was a very you can eat them if you don't if you don't want them you can eat um, them. <laughs> we're going to say about his brothers and his two his two brothers. He said, "Where are your brothers?" He, he says, "Oh, they went off and joined the the RAF, right." And uh, f they fought in the, in the in the Battle of Britain. Mm -hmm. And after that, they were transatlantic pilots, right? But Johnny stayed at home, and he was the the crack of the whole Mummin group from that whole uh, Duroc area, Edirne, Fermanagh, and uh, I got got a film made. Some of the the, the boys came down from Cross Jar and made the film, mm -hmm. the Spences. Mm -hmm. And so we have a film of Johnny, and that's probably the only record that's left. Mm -hmm. And plus that fabulous jacket and yeah. a few other pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and then Paul Carvel from Down the Cash, uh, Paul, Paul was able to copy that. And but things we sparks like that can be can be lost. Uh, ceremonial nearly, nearly mummers lost, jackets nearly lost, yeah. mm -hmm. that are different mm -hmm. from the ordinary farming one. Mm. And uh, the other thing that he had was, was the, the 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 singing the singing to the dog and the bull. You know, all the animals around him could sing, mm. and he had, mm -hmm. he developed this kind of conversation, yeah. talk with them. So links with the animals, you know. It it brings me to my old friend Brendan Bailey used to say he would be in the Ramers for forty or fifty years. He used to say. We got more out of what we did than we actually put into it, because I, I, any yeah. time spent with um, Johnny or or James Mulholland, yeah. James's mask. James Here, is the ball. Maka, Maka is one of James's masks. And um, yeah, that's a just such a lovely mask. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, a, a, German, so. a German or a, a Belgian philosopher or, or anthropologist, and he says if that was found in the tombs of the pharaohs of Egypt or ancient Greece, you know, it wouldn't be out of place. Yeah. Um, so the the, the and, and the good thing that the, the, he made that out of um, that's made out of stripped willow. Mm -hmm. um, this is made out of golden, the Irish golden willow, mm -hmm. and. Um, and it's 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 made with it here because I, I play the tin, tin whistle or the flute. Mm -hmm. So you need yeah. these functional places to put your 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 instruments and things with yes, some of these. And, yeah, yeah. And again, that'd be sixty, maybe God, that's maybe 50, 50 mm. over fifty years old. James uh, was a basket maker. He he made mm -hmm. he made baskets and he made parachute, not parachute, but hot air balloon baskets during mm -hmm. the war. And and here here you can see that they're they're curved here in the shoulders, and uh, yeah. quite comfortable they were. And but James Great. James now would have, he would have covered that with mud or clay, mm -hmm. you know, a clay and wattle uh, probably uh, sort of uh, and hazel would have been used or, and this this is made out of the golden willow, which isn't a great. It was very hard to work with. Yeah, and um, most of the willow that people were usually are boiled and strengthened. And then the, the, that, that ties in with a poem. So all the masks have, would have a poem or a few lines. So this is King Puck. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Drink your porter, tinker man, wipe your frame your mouth. The dust is white upon the road, the wine red from the south. Uh, well, well, where's the point in footing fast when your mouth's on fire with drought? So <laughs> there's, there's lovely poems that go with that. And uh, as I was going to the fair at Dingle, it's songs about King Puck and uh, whoever he was and... Uh, He's and not, and when, when we're out, you know, if we're at a festival or we're maybe in a school, the younger children, I mean, I, I do think that they believe that they're seeing a half half man, half beast character. Yeah. And You're very think, impressive when you walk into a room oh, of any kind with all yeah. with those on. Yeah. Yeah. We get great reactions. From yeah. them. That's a James from Holland as well. James from Holland from North Armagh, from the, the Fluckens of the Gallon. <laughs> On the shores of Loch Ness, you know. So, um, this is the the white ball. Or the, we, we call it the, the Finn Bannock. Is mm -hmm. the white ball of um, going the wrong way? Going yeah. this there way. There you go. Right. <laughs> the white ball. Uh, and uh, the, the the great Irish epic is the battle between the Finn Bannock and the Don Perlinia, the brown ball. Yeah. And um, this is it here. So we do uh, re reenactments of that, and it ties in with the landscape. Because those legends are all about Arma and out the road here, mm -hmm. and that's made with peeled, peeled um, willow, and it is over fifty years old. Um, 
we do a lot of stick fighting and you might see the damage there on the top mm -hmm. of the head you know so um some sometimes i was caught and sometimes dear, dear peter was, <laughs> was caught so we have um, the as sarah was saying we have the you know the poetry and music to go with the masks but mm -hmm. behind us here we've got finn mccool yeah just over to our shoulder there and we have a great player that we bring out um to schools finn mccool and the scottish giant ben o'donner mm -hmm. so the, the the masks have all got a function you know they all they all are somebody um and the, the finn mccool story is great well mm -hmm. but with loads of masks do you want to see more i didn't know <laughs> <laughs> well i i think maybe we should talk a bit about the music um as well as the mask i mean the masks are such a uh, vital part of what you do but um but people are also going to be interested in some of the music i think um and and some of the other traditions so as an example you sort of open your concert with um a a, a segment about hunting the wren or at least the song for hunting the wren um which is itself you know uh, a seasonal tradition so explain a little mm -hmm. bit about the wren the wren the wren well, um, well, of course, the wren is. Um, we always tell the children, you know, you, you all know what the wren looks like. So put up your fist like that, and stick up your tail. So the wee, the wee the tail sticks up here at the back, and um, and then we tell the story of the eagle conquering ran, and then we, we recite the poem. So he lives in a castle in here, you know. Uh, we had we we had a real wren in there. But the, the children got it and gave it a decent burial. Mm. Uh, it was a, a properly stuffed one. So th th that's it. And that's a wren cage made by uh, James Mulholland. Um, so uh, I'll tell you about the wren. The wren was, has been recorded. Um, every There's no country in Europe that hasn't got a, a tradition associated with the wren as being the king of the birds. And the Aesop wrote about it. And so every country in Europe has a tradition, has a ritual, um, and possibly has a song about it but certainly mm -hmm. has a story about it how it became a, a king and um and here in ireland it's called the, the, the druidian so it's, it's associated with druidism and telling the future and we we i suppose it's, it's a good explanation as any that at midwinter uh, for a lot of people to know that the sun was coming back again it had gone south and has disappeared but then it would come back and they were probably watching the the shadows the, the trees and sticks were and and the rain also, and we, we noticed that um, we, when we go out on the wren on Stephen's Day or, or just before it, uh, there's a huge gathering of wrens over at uh, Mucknow, Mucknow Lake. Muck, Mucknow is called after the pig. Okay, County, County Monaghan. County Monaghan. And the, and the birds are going crazy, going buck mad. They do gather, don't they? And, and, it's a, and, and, and at mating time, there's another mm. time, the two times when you will hear the wrens uh, and every cat in the country is out on the prowl looking for them um um so the the the, the rain song and again a house visiting tradition so it was recorded here um you, you, you'd be thankful to the sometimes and other times uh, you wish they never existed anthropologists or folklorists <laughs> and because uh, the clergy <laughs> hear about strange goings on and the starting going around the doors happened here it happened in wales and, and scotland as well great traditions stopped you know mm -hmm. because for one thing and another so the, the old wren boys going from house to house um seamus mcmanus now who'd be well known as a i think he spent his life most of his life Donegal he gone man over in america he, he, he said that in the north up here uh Donegal and tyrone narma that the, the bird was collected for its singing qualities but mm -hmm. in in the southern countries <clears throat> it, it, counties of ireland it was associated with um paganism and the the, the bait it to death with sticks hmm. and made up stories that had some that had, had betrayed um oh, yeah. uh, saint stephen <clears throat> right and then there's and since he was stoned to death they were prepared to stone the, the wee bird to death but i again I, as children i, I remember collecting uh, if, you, if you were clever enough you could sneak up on the nest and block their way out because there's a roof hmm. on it <clears throat> and then you would take it into the house and you get murdered for breaking it open and then all the wrens maybe 20 of them would spew out mm. and, um, which you wouldn't do now would you, you, wouldn't. No, you, wouldn't do that. <laughs> you no 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 but it, 
Yeah. You'd be hopped up for doing that. But so so the, the song itself, um, the drolling, drolling, rain and Ian, um Rubble and Arja. Rubble and Arja is kind of the, the, the Rubble and Arja of Smea Kjolga tree. And it's, it kind of describes the Rubble is a tail mm -hmm. sticking up and uh, and Mea Kjolga tree. And, and me shouting at the top of my voice because it's very angry. We bored oh, for the first size. Yeah. Uh, mm, like a drum. Um, and, then, and I think in Russia it's called Little Tsar. And uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> in France, the, the king. But sure, I think everybody knows. You can look it up in Google. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but there is a tradition in all the European countries associated with the wren. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so we, and, we 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 call ourselves Lucked and Drolling. In fact, that's the only banner that we ever had. It's mm -hmm. uh, green and red. Um, and people of the wren. We saw it today. Lucked and Drolling. So it only comes out. It comes out. We only we take it out for special occasions. It might be in that film. Yeah, I believe I I've seen it somewhere, yeah, so it yes, might be in the film. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that but banner, when we are doing the druid thing. It's older than you think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's the luck, luck and rolling, the people of the Ren. Um, mm -hmm. And um, and that that typically occurs the the day after Christmas, so Saint Stephen's yeah. Day is that the Day. Yeah, yeah. But, but usually usually we're going the whole, whole year round. Um, oh, well, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. But that's the day. That's the day where people day. expect us to turn up at their houses. So right. Whether we want to or not, so yeah. some years you feel like it, and others, but we still go. We still we go. Do, we do. We do. We have yeah. never not done it. And yeah. more well, importantly, too, like traditions change. I have, but since, made it, but men, some of the men in in, in the rhymers, you know, um, uh, it was very hard to keep going when they died, you know. And uh, Brendan is, is died thirteen years now, and Peter's Brendan Bailey, Brendan Bailey, and Peter Peter's short did about ten years. But I all we always went to go now to their graves on Stephen's Day, mm -hmm. and I think to, to during the pandemic when you know we couldn't be taking people out on the street like it was the restrictions were very strict here. Mm -hmm. We 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 just went to their graves and I didn't do the house visit. Remembered them and um, yeah, it's very poignant to yeah go back to um, say hello to them on uh, Stephen's Day. Yeah, and yeah. so. And so some of the masks have been left on their graves, you know, for three or four years. And then yeah. the, 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 the people said, just could we, could we take them away? Like, the, yeah. maybe. And, um, but so, we have a great team of musicians. Um, Barry Lynch, who's mm -hmm. multi-instrumentalist, and he's recently become the proud owner of a hurdy-gurdy. Oh, wonderful. Galicia. <laughs> And he loves it. He, he loves went over to Galicia and, and got, got it there. But that was his arrangement of the rain because we had, we had performed it in a certain way for 40, 50 years. We, we, always, did, we always did that there, um, imitating the rain, you know. And, yeah. And the thought was never changed. We're going. <laughs> kind of imitating the bird. And then Bar Barry said, couldn't we try it? We try it this way. And... and um, yeah, he's great. He arranges very well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we have um, Larry Hart. Larry, Larry, Larry was on, on the banjo the there. Banjo, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. He's from Tyrone. Yeah. yeah. And um, and also Robbie Midlinen from Katie, a very um, well-known fiddler, very mm -hmm. well-regarded fiddler. Um, Annie June Callahan from uh, Fermanagh. And yourself, she's a, and Kiva, she's Kiva. a great singer as well. Yeah, oh, great voice, oh, and, and great personality, oh, lovely, great, mm -hmm. uh, multi talented. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and again, she's been working on, on, on digital films of us and, and storytelling. And, mm -hmm. and uh, from the art point of view, her artwork is, is beautiful. And, and Sarah and um, Kiva, Kira Cullen, Kira Cullen mm -hmm. is from Cumberland, Northern Scotland, but I don't think Kira was on that. Um, no, she wasn't. No. Um, oh, okay. So the full, the full. You're not seeing the whole. And there's this, oh, and, um, yeah, there's a lot, lot of other people. Yeah, and it's, Jim, and, it's uh, funny watching the film because from the outside you can't tell who the who the performers are because mm. we don't, you know, uh, the viewers don't know which mask, you know, goes with which uh, with yeah. which singer or which performer. So yeah, you can see yeah. Annie a little bit through her mask. Right, you could. That's right. Yeah, that mask you could see the, through yeah, a bit. Lovely. Uh, mm -hmm. for, there. for singing um, purposes, I can understand the mm -hmm. larger gaps. So and John, Johnny McGuinness wasn't there. Oh, who was there? No, he wasn't. And 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 Fikra, Fikra, Mick. Uh, Mick. So yeah, a, a pipe 
pipes, um, sir, and the flute. But we we have a, a large pool of players. Uh, at Halloween, for instance, so this Halloween coming now, we will be in Germany, mm-hmm. our group, um, Barry and Annie, Barry in charge of that group. And then uh, we're, we're going to be in Liverpool Irish Fest and at the same time, same night. And then we're uh, at, Derry. up in Derry City. Uh, D- Derry mm-hmm. City have the biggest Halloween festival in Europe. And we, we go there every year. So we'll be there too. And then also in Coltra, the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum, which is a fantastic place. Yeah. Yeah, we're in, quite, we're in big demand. So so that would be great. We have a big team, so big you, you team. saw some of the some of the ones there on the on the on the film, but uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, people aren't always free, or they're working somewhere else, and uh, so. yeah, I noticed that your your structure is different from a typical band, and is more like perhaps a theater company, mm-hmm. um, where you have a pool of people that you draw from for any particular production. Do you th- does that sound accurate to you? Yeah, we have that. We yeah. have that core. We we have a core of, of musicians, but we also have other musicians, a bit, a little bit more in the periphery. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, yeah, some of our, you know, when we're looking for people, we're looking for people who can speak, say poetry, play music, maybe dance, mm-hmm. um, and yeah. have, have the have the rhymes and uh, have worked with us before. For instance, we're in um, singing of Liverpool, but like we went to. 2020 we were down in new orleans and we had taken part in the the mardi gras the country mardi gras at lafayette and lake mm-hmm. charles and places like that but there we have the uh Mar- the new orleans rhymers so there's randy french there um plays the bones and noel hill randy would know all all our rhymes as would um the chief and brian mcmahon so mm-hmm. and we used to have sean o'mara but sean died and um betsy, betsy McGovern, mcgovern betsy mostly McGovern. in part betsy was in mm-hmm. a national mm-hmm. champion singer a uh, folk singer and um so we we, we did, we did you say our... Be- Be- betsy mcgovern did you say yeah yeah, betsy. yeah 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 old friend of mine so that's oh, great oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think she's moved her and david moved out west have they or uh, yeah she moved somewhere yeah you're right yeah, somewhere, um, yeah. yeah. And she shouldn't have moved but <laughs> well, well, <laughs> how could you leave how could you leave that place? city Wonderful. well yeah. i think also too when when we're, we're looking for people we're looking for people who are sympathetic towards the type of work that we do uh, that that's very important mm-hmm. I think, as gamers, you know you, you have huh. got to want to perform you've got to want to go to special needs schools to go to um you know places where senior citizens live mm-hmm. sure um, and and that's very important and yeah. a, t- a tour of scotland we we pull in um rory and and um what do you call them Ewan. Ewan, Ewan mm-hmm. and Rory mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, the and the, the tall lady. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So we have a group. We have a group there that we we rely on, you know. And like we would speak a bit of Gaelic and a bit of Ga- and a lot of Gaelic. So mm-hmm. our mm-hmm. our Irish language t- team here now is um, a- 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 Irish, Irish, Irish. Yeah. Irish. Mm-hmm. The pr- the problem with with with, uh, with the Irish language is they're just too good and they're they're snapped up, you know. <laughs> uh, the next minute they get these jobs and media media and and um, yeah so you only get them at the weekends yeah. you know? right you're always faced with that problem of people you know maybe moving on or getting a different job but mm-hmm. you know it's, it's i think a lot of people want to work with mm-hmm. with the rhymers yeah and we, but and that's up for you we wanted to do the irish dance and we wanted to do so much more and put the irish so- language songs on but it yeah just, that's that's who was free okay. that day yeah. and and sure um, now, um, now you've mentioned your work in different environments, including schools for you know with kids, and then um, you know old age environments for yeah. for older folks. Um, could we talk a little bit about each of those? Like, be- begin with your um, your educational programs for kids, if you if you could just talk a little bit about them. Well, you know, I'm I'm going to bring you back. Mm-hmm. In the seventies, um, to when sure. the Rhymers mm-hmm. first kicked off, and uh, you know, it was a very, this place was a very di- different place then. Um, we were just chatting about this today. I think the schools um, were really a sanctuary for children. You know, during what was really a, a quite a, a nasty war situation, and um, everything, nearly everything, had been blown up. You know, there were no well, there probably weren't any many theaters anywhere, but no. the ones that they had were, were blown up. 
And and then the Rhymers came along and, uh, you know, their one of their core ideas was to, to get the, the culture out to schools. And not only that, but to get it out to all of the schools. I think what's interesting about the mumming and rhyming tradition here is that it's really claimed by everybody, which is quite unusual in this part of the world. Um, it's it's welcomed by all sections of the community. And even now, as we welcome the new Irish people coming in from Eastern Europe, we're realizing that, yes, the Bulgarians have a mass culture, yeah. the Poles have a mass culture. So um, the, the Rhymers brought this great mix of music, fun, or we call it crack, C-R-A-I-C, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and, and, and music to schools to children who were often living in you know, pr pretty bad circumstances with what was happening on the streets at the time. And then, um, you know, a, a, a very big development. The Rhymers were and are acknowledged to be the first group who used the arts to bring, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people listening will realise that. And schools are still divided along sectarian lines here. Schools yeah. for Catholic schools for Protestants. There's a small integrated sector. Um, the Armagh Rhymers are, are credited with um, being the first group to bring schools together. So, you know, St. Mary's would come together with the local little Protestant school and they would put on a play together with the Rhymers. And that was really a feature of school life here and still is a feature of school life through mm -hmm. the shared education projects. Um, and that was very, in, in a way, it was quite daring to, to do that because a lot of people wouldn't have been for that. Yeah. You wouldn't get so much opposition now, but back in the 70s, you would. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's something that the Rhymers are very rightly very proud of. Um, and of course, our, um, our, our programs now, we change our programs during the year and we'll have something for St. Bridget at St. Bridget's Day and we'll have the Christmas mummers. And last year we recorded Miss Fogarty's Christmas Cake, nice. which I think is an, an, Irish, an Irish American yeah. song. Yeah. And we have that up on our, on our website. Um, so now we go into schools with a, a variety of programs and we, we, we have, a I think, a special calling to the special schools um, and um, we have special programs for them and absolutely love working with children with special needs. And um, they remember us, they meet us on the street, they love, hmm. just love the music. And of hmm. course, the children with special needs can just be as good as everybody else when it comes to dancing and playing the instruments with us. and. Um, we have moved into the 21st century with our schools portal um, mm -hmm. and we put out a lot of digital content. Now, it hasn't long started, so we're, we're still working on our digital and we'll continue to work on our digital content. And we're putting that out to schools um, across the country. And we'd, we'd love to have um, international hosts for that, too. Um, wow. We'll be presenting the Irish music, culture, art to a younger audience. Dara, wonderful, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose it's it should be a universal right that the children would have mm. access to the arts, you know. And even today, going out, you surprise that children looking at a violin and asking, "Is that a, is it a guitar? Is it a guitar?" Hmm. And trying to and the, the vocabulary, and of course, the fascination with the hurdy gurdy that Mark hmm. produced, yeah, and um where is the sound coming from and the, the materials that somebody had to make a violin you know and we would quote a hoodie went yeah. quite a lot you know um it's great uh the pipes the island pipes yeah, as but well you, but what, what's really lovely and you know this this happens on quite a regular basis that we we'll, we'll meet people now who will say barry Kerr would be an example very well known musician here and he said he 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 had to get was it he started on the whistle I'm sure mm -hmm. he had to get a whistle after he saw the rhymers in school about thirty years ago mm -hmm. so I th I think um and sometimes it's hard to to sort of um, oh, well, where was that wee spark where, where uh, did that wee spark come from yeah and I, think, I think the rhymers yeah. have been igniting wee sparks all over the country in the last uh, forty five years and and the love of poetry too yeah. the, 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 you know that you yeah. see grown ups reciting the poetry and there's no book in sight you know and, yeah. What's word? Children have to see that. They have that. They mm. have to see that. Really, you know. And, and uh, in today's world, it's very important. I, I brought that book around. I don't know. If you, you mm. suppose you've you have enough books. <laughs> you know, I have a few, but yeah. You had that one there by Seamus Heaney. Oh, that's a lovely one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, uh, room to room to rhyme. Right. When that, when that came out, Seamus did that for. I think it was Dumfries. Um, 
university. It was for cancer research. Mm -hmm. So we, we bought 20 of them. Nice. And I think they were five pounds or ten pounds each, a couple of dollars each. They're now three hundred pounds. Wow! <laughs> and oh, uh, happy sure. days, you know. Um, mm. And he, he says here, if I could, it, it just, it just, it just some, it, it summed it all up. Mm. You know that he's talking about, um, he, like he's he's the the Nobel. Uh, oh, everybody poet. knows Seamus. Do they all know famous Seamus? <laughs> you know all the part yeah. of famous Seamus. God rest him. And uh, this book should be. We, there's an exhibition at the moment um, in, the, in the Bank of Ireland about Seamus Heaney opposite, mm -hmm. opposite uh, Trinity College. And then there's the home place up in Balahi where he was born. This book should be at the front door. That's right. People. And he says here, um, uh, he's, he's talking about why he wrote mm -hmm. poetry. And and this is uh, how important the mum and poetry and knowing lines and knowing things off by heart. Silly wee rhymes. He says, "Hence the mummer." Do you want to, you're better reader than yeah. you're better. Mm -hmm. hence I the can read, but <laughs> hence the mummer's rhyme that means most to me is the one that my father used to say, and would surprise us by saying, since he normally said so little. And not only did he say the rhyme, but the more he said, the more he enjoyed it to the extent of always ending up in a laugh that would accumulate into a tumultuous smoker's cough. That rhyme was the one that would have been spoken by on at Christmas by the boy with the doctor's bag and it went like this. Here come a Dr. Brown, the best wee doctor in the town. I can cure the plague within the plague without the palsy in the gathering worm on the skitters and the lungs. Better right. <laughs> 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 you probably you probably know the rest. His lines are different now, you know. Sure. Um, Everyone had slightly different ones, yeah. When, yeah. when we met Seamus, which was not not often enough, you know, no, he, he was a he would he would challenge you, he would challenge yeah. you, he would mm. challenge you that. And most of the mm -hmm. poets of Ireland have written about the house visiting tradition, and uh, the other one that comes and the rhymers, oh, uh, at the the rhymers were at Seamus's last poetry reading. We were asked to come and mm. play music, and it was yeah. down in County Clare. Down in County Clare, and Michael Longley. Oh, fabulous oh. poet Michael. Michael had his arms round Seamus. And, oh, well, Seamus wasn't well at the time. And we we we, yeah. we moved round them reciting uh, the, the, one of the, the ritual poems and yeah. uh, said a few of Michael's poems and then some of Seamus's poems. And uh, uh, it, was, it was just lovely that they had asked us. Yeah, and, and, and he was and, dead two weeks after that. Um, it was really yeah, um, yeah. Uh, there you are. Wait. We we yeah. A great loss, but it was wonderful that you were able to be there and oh, a mm -hmm. big and loss. See it. Be there big for loss. him, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but mm -hmm. did did we stray off the point there? We did, did we? all the time. Well, <laughs> rabbit hole. Did. You did. <laughs> well, but but the other thing that I that I was asking about was um your performances for older people. I mean, it must be the case that some of them would remember um, house visiting rhymers when they were when they were children, and they're seeing oh, yeah. you come come in now so how is that what's that experience like well you know it's it, you, you have to go into, into those places and we, you people who have lost their eyesight and they, they have no movement you know and the hearing mightn't be good so you're looking for a hand movement or a toe tapping you know and um and then you have to be as uh, were uh, as well of the people who are working there the nurse the caring staff and all that you know and um uh, but, but I also yeah. also think we, like, we, we we divide our work up into because people are always asking what do you do, so we we would say there's the education, there's the entertainment, there's the ritual is very important, but there's the health and well being. Now that is the well being of the people who are listening to you, but also your health. You see, to walk on out of after performing, you know, for an hour for a group of people you know that um, have maybe have been looking at television and no interest in it but the nurse uh, tapping you on the shoulder and saying did you, did you notice her feet moved hmm. she has moved or responded to anything that we did now i know i remember the spot where that happened and um and the blanket over somebody or uh, up in uh, in some place where um we asked that um we were performed they would put a bottle of guinness on the table right in front of people who probably and and the thing was to see whose hand would reach out <laughs> to see for the bottle of guinness the old memory came back and um look uh, the, the, the 
the people rem remember the, ch the, the, the poems and the songs of their childhood. And that is sometimes why, what you might think is heresy. We're singing, how much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> And uh, Alabama with a banjo on my knee. <laughs> Once your kids would have sung, everybody sang those songs, okay. you know. But if mm -hmm. you're going in there singing um, anything uh, fairly recent or that's not in the memory cycle of the people, and well, the boys would count the Arma, every you know, they would all know that, and, yeah, yeah. And, and maybe if they were, you know, able bodied, would get up for a waltz, the characters would take take people up for a waltz but yes we do meet we do meet people who have the lines still in their head on the uh, even sometimes it surprises me relatively young people remembering you know mm -hmm. the mummers coming into their house depends mm -hmm. on the on the on the part of the country of course uh, yeah, sure. uh, there's we, a wee man raps here and he he he, he, he wrote his own rhymes and one of his rhymes i know lasted 35 minutes huh. and it was wow. about, about going to work for a man who fed him who paid him in eggs. <laughs> and he was living with this man at the time. <laughs> and of course, he turned he turned into hen at the end of it. And you know that's going to yeah. happen anyway. <laughs> but, and, um, but at 90 years and plus, he was reciting he that. He was able to know the rhyme. The body is broke, had it gone, mm. everything else gone, but the mind, yeah. you know, that, 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 oh, there's a bit of therapy. There's a health and well. There's, there's a bit a of therapy and, and learning it, and yeah, yeah, and off by heart. And, Definitely. And when you're going through an operation, as we all go through an operation, you know, it, it keeps the old head together. If you stop, start saying Doctor Brown's lines. Yeah. <laughs> a few more for Christmas. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I know we've been told by people that the, you know, the appreciation of music is it really lingers on with people, even although maybe they've got you know quite a dementia forms of dementia and that and that the yeah. music is really is is still there until the end and we have found that in places yeah there's a happiness yeah. we, we, we did a program a particular program once a few years ago now called rediscovering happiness and we yeah. had we did it around a whole about 12 different homes for old mm -hmm. people and we got it was great now and then to be yeah. asked back year after year yeah. you know and then it, we were we're providing um and like you, you met Claire there earlier. You know, we work for creative people, and and setting that up, you know, and um, uh, I, I, I know uh, to keep that pool of people employed. Well, you it know, is the we, rhymers are. We couldn't do it without enterprise, yes, yeah, so without the enterprise. arts council, and mm -hmm. like we are the favourite of the arts council here, north and south. You know. Mm -hmm. and, we have partnerships with the National Museum of Ireland with and with the National Folklore Place, uh, the Belfast uh, Museums and uh, and the different all the different councils. They know, they know what we do. And um, if, they, if they have some a bit of funding, it'll go our way, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, and then. Uh, but I think, too, we've we have um, we've spawned a lot of other groups and we have a, gr a group now coming down from Donegal. And they want to start up a, a rhymers, a community rhymers group. So they're coming down to to meet us and be a part of one of our rehearsals and have a bite date with us. So, yeah, and mm -hmm. that's good. There's a lot of them. Um, mm -hmm. And a mummers seem to be appearing in every detective drama that's being shot here at the <laughs> moment. With Netflix in with us yesterday. And Sky. And well, Sky and, and yeah. we're dated with TV uh, companies. And, and Dracula too. We were well, yeah. that. Well, it's, you know, it's interesting that Thea commented to me that that the beginning of your concert video where the where the the mummers are demanding the, the rhymers are demanding entrance to the house. There, there's a certain degree of, um, you know, it's a little bit scary. There's a yeah, little bit of, of threat obviously. involved mm -hmm. in the process of dressing up uh, mm -hmm. in these costumes. So it makes sense to some extent that, you know, the, the murder mystery genre would yeah. <laughs> would go for, uh, for this kind of mysterious look. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, well, you know, and even with the children, um, I think, uh, you, you know, when we're going into schools, um, of course, the children, we, they don't want to scare the smaller children. So yeah, we right. can all just go in. Usually, Dara and myself will go into the really wee tiny ones. And, uh, you know, we'll introduce them to the masks and I will pretend I'm afraid of them. So it works. Yeah, that, but, you know, good, yeah. even although we're now meeting adults who and sometimes it comes across, across even on Twitter. Oh, my God. Those were the guys who scared us 40 years ago. <laughs> That's funny. It's a, good, it's a good scare. And yeah. 
all children need a good scare in a safe environment and at the end they know that those people mean well you know yeah. so it's um, yeah, but it is yeah. the beginning of the the, the, the concert is we've, we've caught that spookiness i think yeah very 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 effective so, yeah, yeah. yeah i was just going to say we're getting toward the end of our time so i'm wondering if there's any anything our audiences should know that i didn't ask about <laughs> anything you that you particularly want to let us we know just about. wanted to point uh, point out uh yeah because uh, their notes oh wait we were in a great lecture there last night and help me and and written over the, the library in Arma in greek mm -hmm. in greek How, how's your greek oh okay well try um, me and it's not it's not that good but <laughs> in, in the 1700s it, in 1771 it didn't say library it said the healing place of, of the, the soul. soul and that nice. was Armar library is is, is 29 years Younger, older, oh, older. older. No, who's oh, I older. No, we're I, the oldest. You're we're 20 the, years, you're 29 years younger than us. Ah, yeah, got that wrong. Are you impressed with that? That's the healing that, place of the soul. That is wonderful. The healing place yeah. of the soul. And then the other thing I wrote down here was the Library of Congress is there to inspire, engage, and inform, you know. And the board also mentioned, oh, board. goodness, here. What and then the other thing underneath that's a load of rubbish. I, I just thought I'd get that in. <laughs> Uh, our bo uh, the reason we we're so function so well is we have a very good uh, strong board of people. Mm -hmm. We're all creatives. Like John uh, John McAllister, uh, he's on his tenth or eleventh uh, novel, you know. So he's a Amazing. writer. Uh, he composes yeah. for us as well. So John and uh, Mary Murphy is um, jeweler. a jeweler. Mm -hmm. I was going to show you our, our Ren boys, which you can order again. Um. I should model that, should I? You should. Uh, Our, uh, just a silver jewelry, right? The red, you can see Lovely. the red there and the red mask, and uh, kind of a min minimalist thing. And um, Bri um, and, Bri and Bri Bridget, uh, Bridget is a uh, poet, a, a writer as well. Um, Nolan historian. Uh, uh, Nolan's historian and mm -hmm. uh, and an art heart. She's a board member I'm as a well. Board member, yeah. You know, I, I'm paid actually. Um, <laughs> I'm a volunteer. Oh, no. oh well. And, and the right. other connection with, 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 with very interesting, you know, that about 20, uh, 20 or of the presidents of the United States came from these counties here, right? Yeah. And, but we were performed the other day in Woodrow Wilson's, Wilson's house, still standing, right? That is his great grandfather's <laughs> house. So, gr grandfather, great grandfather of Woodward, Woodrow Wilson <laughs> left Straban, like, where the hell is Straban, in 1803. Uh, running for his life with the red coats after him. Wow! And a hundred years later, um, uh, his son or grandson or whatever walks into the White House as the president, right? And in two thousand and three, yeah, we perform mm -hmm. on the same floor, a clay floor, the Mummers play. You know, I just the preserved the people kept the house. Oh, fabulous! Uh, and. Uh, and we're going over to America um, oh. in February to Kansas. Wonderful. Uh, to the Folk Alliance. We met you last. Yes, Alliance. and we'll see we'll you there. there. Absolutely, will you will I will there? be there. Yeah. We'll be there in Kansas. Well, I hope I'll be there. We'll have to yeah. see, but it's the plan is for me to be there. So. Yeah, so we're uh, looking forward oh, to so that. Oh, so you're going to be yeah. there. Right. Yeah. We, we um, met some of us down in New Orleans, I think, did we? Yeah, uh, and, and uh, as I said, when you walked into the exhibit hall in your in your masks it was i think the most impressive thing that the folks in there who had been sitting behind their tables to <laughs> you know, the display board. their stuff had oh, seen yeah. of the weekend and they were just you know in awe of you and yeah. i think that's the the effect that your video is going to have on our audiences as well thank yeah, you thanks for saying and you know so, we, we love to just remember our our good friend mick maloney Yes, um, who we actually had the the pleasure of hosting, um, in Arma in May time, and we're all very sad about Mick, and he was a great man. We Mick thought was a, gone forever. Mm -hmm. Mick was a a great great man. He's mm -hmm. performed in our concerts and also given lectures for us mm -hmm. at the Library of Congress. He was mm -hmm. personally very important to me as well. My first mm -hmm. teaching job was as Mick's teaching assistant, actually, yeah. back in mm -hmm. 1992. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I was in graduate school at the same time mm -hmm. as as Mick. So thank you for bringing Mick up as well, because as you say, there's no more important figure in Irish American music than right. Mick Maloney. Although we should say in relation to, to Armagh, um, one of the most important figures in Irish American music 
in the world came from maybe 10 miles from Armagh town, which, who was Tommy Makem, of Tommy. course. Yeah. So Tommy, we should mention Tommy as well in, in relation yes. to what you do, part of that same tradition. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tommy, Tommy has written several songs for us, and another one about the Wren. He's written a really yes. song, the Wren Boys, right. for us as well. Yeah, and um, Tommy w w will not be forgotten. That's for uh -huh. sure. Absolutely. He, yeah, and I think that when all is said and done, the Arma Rhymers will not be forgotten. I mm -hmm. think that the body of work that you've put out, and not just you know tangible things like recordings, but as you say, these lives that you've touched over forty years of of people who now you know are are adults who remember you as children um that when they were children i should say and and people who um you know will just go through their lives having been touched by you so you. we want to thank once again dara valley and mm -hmm. hart thank you so much for being here and representing the arma rhymers right. Stancha, Stancha, Stancha. Stancha. Stancha.